Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and I am going to talk about academic self-efficacy some more today. And we're going to do it particularly in the context of how to take a standardized exam, which is why I have it written up there. The idea here is that standardized exams, for the most part, are made in such a way that you can easily grade them. And by easily grading it, means that, that what that means is that it's done by Scantron, which means that you're going to have true and false, multiple choice, matching questions, something that can be put on a Scantron that can be answered A, B, C, D, E uh, in the midst of the questions so that you can grade it easily. There are some standardized exams that have essay type questions, that have rubrics that you may or may not be aware of, um, but those are a lot harder to grade and they require a lot more in terms of grading them and thus are not used as much. So in terms of standardized exams, what we're talking about is we're talking about some kind of exam that was made by some committee, uh, usually, <laughs> as part of a society that is giving this exam <clears throat> or some kind of group like the College Board that's giving this exam to basically kind of calibrate different groups of people comparatively to other groups of people within the same overall idea. So for instance, if we wanted to do the most, some of the most common standardized exams like SATs or ACTs, then at least in the US, then what we're doing is we're trying to say the folks who are in the you know, 11th and 12th grade in Minnesota have the same kinds of skills as the folks in Ohio or Georgia or whatever. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. In terms of standardized exams, that means that inevitably they're made up of multiple choice, true, false, or matching the vast majority of the time. The way you're going to approach these is by doing three cuts of the exam. Now, what does a cut mean? What a cut means is that you go through the entire exam and do everything that you can within that cut. Go through the entire exam, and then for the second cut, you start at the beginning again, or if you started from the end, which some people really like to do. If you started from the beginning, let's say that you started at the beginning, you go back to the beginning and do the entire exam over again for the second cut, and the third cut, you start at the beginning and go through the entire exam over again. Okay, so you're essentially looking through the exam three times when you do this. The first cut is going to be everything that you can answer quickly and correctly. So this is all the stuff you know. This is everything you're like, I got this. I know the answer to this. Let me do it. And I can do it fast. That's what the first cut is for. Okay? It's pretty self-explanatory. This is the stuff you really know. Second cut is those things that you can answer correctly, but take more time. All right, what does that mean? While you're in the midst of the first cut, you're going through the exam. You're saying to yourself, I know this, I know this, I know this, great. If the entire exam is the first cut, great. <laughs> That's the most ideal of all worlds. That's not going to happen the vast majority of the time. So let's, let's talk about what you do after you get to this point. While you're going through the first cut, you might say to yourself, OK, this is stuff that I absolutely know quickly and correctly. And then at the same time, you're looking at all of the questions because you're reading all of the questions. You might be marking for the second cut those that you know you can get but are going to take more time. Right? So you're going to say, OK, I, I know I can get this one, but I, I need to skip it for the moment. And so that's the idea of the second cut. You go back and you do all of those that you know you can get, but are going to take more time than the first cut. OK? The third cut is a combination cut. And this is, um, this is kind of when you've done everything that you can get well. OK? The third cut really is dependent, and what that's dependent on is it's dependent on whether you have points, extra points taken away for guessing. Okay, so if, if extra points 
are deducted for guessing, then this is where this cut differs, okay? So the third cut. Mandatorily in this cut, no matter what you're doing, you're going to answer or you're going to try to suss out, um, answer those questions. You can narrow to a 50-50 chance. All right, so what does this mean? Let's say that this is a four question test. So it has A, B, C, and D for almost every answer. The thought here is that if you could narrow it down to just B or C, and both A and D are ridiculous, ridiculous answers, and you know that, so you know something about the question, but you're not sure you can answer it correctly, then you narrow it down to a 50-50 chance, and you guess one of those. Okay, that's usually true across the board. Um, because when you're talking about the extra points for guessing, these are ones that you can actually possibly get. Where the extra points for guessing comes in is in the second part of this. The second part of this is really where you basically have zero knowledge or zero time or both. <laughs> All right, so you look at the question, you have no freaking clue what it's asking, and, uh, and or you're running out of time and they're calling a time frame. You have maybe five minutes left and you're like, I have 20 questions left. This is what you do with this last part. The second part differs depending on if there's extra points deducted for guessing. Okay, so for number two, if the extra four or two, if extra points are deducted for guessing, you leave it blank. Sorry, I'm writing on the edge here. Woo! I'll make this a little bit easier to see. There you go. Oh, hey. Woohoo! All right, so you leave it blank. It's, it's a no-brainer, guys. The amount of uh, points you're going to get from guessing when you have zero knowledge or zero time is not worth the amount of points that will be deducted because they're basically deducting extra stuff, extra points, for you not knowing the answer. That's, that's not going to be worthwhile. The SAT used to be like this. There are other ones that are like this. Um, that's not true of a lot of standardized exams, but you got to be really careful and you got to know whether those extra points are deducted or not going into the exam. That's the important piece. If you have zero knowledge or zero time or both, and no extra points are deducted for guessing, then what you do, and this is true for a lot of exams, is you pick a letter. Often people pick B or C because statistically that's kind of one of those is often the right answer. C is um, often given if, uh, usually the statistically, the most statistically um, answered letter is the one right before the total number of answers. So in other words, C is always given because if you have four answers for each question, you have an A, B, C, or D, then C is the one right before D. So C is the most common answer. If it's five questions, then, and it has A, B, C, D, or E, then D is the most common answer. That's kind of the thought. Now that's not always true. And sometimes tests are manipulated to not have that be true. But that's kind of across the board what you do. You pick a letter and you answer it. For every remaining question. All right, so if you do not have extra points taken off for guessing, then it is worth your while to guess 
and you're not going to make pretty patterns and you're not going to do weird stuff where you're picking B or C for any given answer. You're going to pick C and answer that for every blank that is remaining. And that's because you probably have at least a 20 to 25% chance of getting that right just by guessing. So you could get some extra points just by guessing. Even if, um, this is really if extra points are not deducted. Okay, so first cut. Answer quickly, everything that you can answer quickly and correctly, you do, entire exam. Second cut, you answer everything that you can answer correctly, but may take more time. Do that until you basically are down to the last 10-ish minutes. If this takes up until the last 10-ish minutes, then you're just doing the zero time piece. And if you have points deducted for guessing, you leave it blank. If you do not have points, extra points deducted for, leave, for guessing, then you pick a letter, whatever that letter is, and you answer it for every remaining question. And that is how you take a, a standardized exam. Until next time, I bid you adieu.